am Dado. I'm a director of photography and we also build lighting equipment. Today we will talk about the concept of the portable studio in LED lighting. There are many different configurations of our LED lighting instruments. Now, sometimes you may want to use only one single light to augment ambient light. Sometimes you want to be a little bit more ambitious in your lighting style. Here, for example, we will show an LED dado light kit with four lights consisting of two multi-LED panel lights and two focusing dado lights. Such a kit could be a mono-color kit where all the light sources are of daylight color temperature. But one of the wonderful advantages of such dado light lighting equipment is the bicolor version, which allows to adjust each light in a wide range of color temperatures from very warm 2700 to quite cool color temperatures above 6000. Thus, you can adapt yourselves to many ambient lighting situations simply by the turn of a knob. And within the lighting, with several lighting instruments, you can vary the color temperature without the need of any filtering. Here, as an example, we will show lighting of a single person in an interview situation. Now, this could possibly be a situation with little or no ambient light, or it could very well be a situation where there is a lot of ambient light so that the room in which we shoot will also play a major role. In such case, we will just simply fit our lighting into the lighting that is prevalent in the room, but try to give it some special character to attract the attention of our viewer towards the person being interviewed. We can start with a multi-LED panel kit, the Daedalite Feloni. Depending on the level of the ambient light situation in which we have to work, we may want to have more light intensity or we can live with a lower light. This determines whether we choose to use the multi-LED Feloni light without any diffuser or with a diffuser which fits directly onto the light, or if we want to make it even more gentle and amiable, we can add the Filoni softbox. So this would be our key light. And again, depending on the situation, we may want to add a grid onto the softbox if we decide to keep spill light from the key light away from the background. Sometimes we may even want to keep light away from the camera or the background by adding the barn door flaps, which of course do not work like a barn door on a studio Fresnel light. They're simply there to keep the light away from the lens or from the background. In a situation where we work with several lights, we may want to explore how far away from the camera axis we want to place the light in order to give the face more plasticity, more dimension, more depth. We want to keep it placed in such a way that we maintain a reflex in both eyes. Such a reflex is important to give the eyes some life and a sign of communication. How high the key light goes depends on where the person is looking and whether the eyes are easier accessible or deeper set. Angle and height of the key light determine where the shadow of the nose will go. Usually the nose shadow is less disturbing if it falls into the crease next to the mouth. Now, we balance the intensity of the key light so that it attracts attention to the person and balances it against the lighting of the background. With a bicolor light, we will also balance the color temperature 
to match an existing background. These decisions and adjustments should be done in the beginning so that the settings of other light sources that we use will fall into place. As a second light, we may want to use a fill light to balance the contrast. Now this could be done by a reflector or any kind of reflecting surface placed suitably or it could be another lighting instrument. Now, usually this would also be a lighting instrument with a larger surface, so it can fill the shadows in a gentle and maybe unnoticeable way. Again, we explore how far away from the camera axis we want to place the fill light for the most pleasing or desired dramatic effect, and at the same time, we choose whether the fill light should come from below or above. The placement and the setting of the key light and fill light will determine how smooth and gentle the face will look or whether to bring out distinct features or even a dramatic depiction of the face. It all depends on the kind of a story we want to tell and the general style of the sequence. As a backlight, we may use one of our focusing lights and at first we may again look for the most advantageous position. Depending on possible limitations, where we can put, place, hang or fix the backlight and on the hair color, the reflectivity of the hair and the clothing of the person, if the backlight comes from above, we may want to balance the reflection on the top of the head with a gentle rim of reflection on the shoulders by using barn doors or half scrims. When we use the barn doors for the light distribution of the backlight, it may be helpful to remember that in the flood position of a focusing light, the barn doors will create a more distinct shadow edge, whilst the more you focus the light towards the spot, the edge of the barn door shadow will become less noticeable. Thus, you can create and choose the precision of the light and shadow edge. When the backlight is set in the best position, then we may want to dim it all the way down to make it functional, but least obtrusive. With our bicolor LED lights, we can also play with the balance of color. With the fill light, we could have chosen a slightly warmer look in relation to the key light. Often for the backlight, it is preferred to tune it a little bit cooler. With our bicolor lights, no filters are needed. Simply adjust the color temperature of the light for the most desirable effect. If the background does not perform well enough on its own, we may want to light the background. If the background is neutral, we may want to create lighting effects on the background for mood, but also for the feeling of size and depth of the room. Now we can create some lighting patterns on the background with the help of the barn door, but it may be much more interesting to use the imager, the projection attachment, to project a gobo pattern a light and shadow pattern on the background. We can adjust the size of such a projection by the distance of the light fixture to the background or with the optional many different lenses that we have to create wider angle coverage or more distinct coverage with longer lenses. With gobo projections, you can use recognizable patterns and often you may want to throw these out of focus to create a better illusion of more distance, more space, more three-dimensionality of your image. If the content of your story allows or calls for a more creative background, you may want to use our background effect filters. 
which come in many different patterns and colors. Here it is interesting to notice that these projected background patterns seem to change their character a lot when projected in focus or depending on how far they're thrown out of focus. There's also the possibility of using a sandwich by putting a steel gobo and a background effect glass together. Our background effect glasses come in eight different colors with 11 different structures. With the steel gobos, you can find a choice of nearly 600 different structures, designs and patterns. Then, there's yet another interesting choice for the creation of your backgrounds. Now this is made possible by the low forward heat emission of our focusing LED lights. You can shoot any kind of image on your iPhone or with your camera, print out this image on any kind of suitable gel, cut it to size and fit it into the filter holder of the focusing data lights and project this image. When projected in clearest focus, you may notice the depiction of the pixel structure of your printer, reminiscent of pointillist paintings. Throw this projection slightly out of focus and the structure will not be noticeable anymore. Usually you will find that the color saturation and contrast of such prints is not very strong or distinct but as a gentle background, depending on the exposure to which you adjust by dimming the light, it may give a wonderful dreamlike background image. Again here, you have the potential of combining the image that you printed with a gobo to give the effect like you're looking through a doorway or a window. Usually, you may not want to project such an image onto your talent. Therefore, you will place such a projection to come from an angle where the projected image does not touch your object. This usually will result in a keystoning effect of the projected image on the background. For many images, this may not be disturbing. But if the image that you're using demands a depiction without keystoning effect, you may pre-adjust the image in Photoshop before printing. If you distort such an image in Photoshop on one side with an angle of 4 to 5 degree on top and bottom, the image will straighten out when you're projecting from an angle of approximately 30 degree. Yet, Another creative advantage offered in a very simple way, but with perfect results by the data light system. For our focusing LED lights, this works very well, even for relatively long periods, whilst for the HMI data lights and halogen data lights, where we have similar options, it needs a particular slide holder or a very good heat reflecting filter as well as additional cooling by a little fan. With our LED lights, that is not necessary, and everything can be done quickly and easily. Mm -hmm.